Breaking news, want to bring you right now, House lawmakers have passed a bill to avert a rail strike. Uh, we want to give you that number right now. The vote was 290 to 137. Again, the House has voted to block a potential rail strike. Uh, now, fertilizer is one of the products that relies heavily on freight rail transportation. I want to bring in uh, President and CEO of the Fertilizer Institute, Corey Rosenbush. Uh, Corey, great to have you here. First, your reaction. Uh, as expected, the House has now passed this bill to avert a, a rail strike. Now, it's got to go to the Senate. Things might get a little more dicey over there, but your initial thoughts here, sir. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl, for having me. This is terrific news. This is the first step, as you mentioned, and we're really pleased that uh, the House has understood how important uh, the rail network is for the American economy and the American farmer and the American consumer. And uh, there's still a big hurdle left. We need to get this across to the Senate. Uh, for the fertilizer industry and for the farmer, it's it's been a challenging time. The American farmer is coming off a period of uh, really complex and and uh, uh, complicated fertilizer markets. We had geopolitical uh, to natural gas situations that have driven up the cost of inputs, and about 50 percent of the crop yields in the world depend upon fertilizer. And we move that fertilizer through the rail network. Uh, about half of all fertilizer in the U.S. will move along uh, the rail network. And so going into the spring planting season, it is absolutely critical that we have all of those uh, fertilizer products out to the farmer. Without the fertilizer that the farmer uses, uh, we would be looking at catastrophic global food security issues. Well, I was going to say, because when the war in Ukraine began, um, fertilizer came to the forefront because of production of fertilizer there. Has that that eased at all? Has that improved over the over the year? Yeah, you know, when we when we first saw the war broke out, we kind of were thinking a lot about getting their grain shipments out, and then then we were thinking a lot about Russian and specifically Belarusian fertilizer product. Russia is one of the largest producers of fertilizer. They they supply about 20 percent of the global potash. And Belarus, combined with Russia, is about 40 percent of the total global potash supply. Uh, but now the issue has turned to natural gas. Natural gas is the building block for fertilizers, specifically ammonia. And so with much of Europe being supplied by uh, Russian natural gas, uh, we've seen huge curtailments of nitrogen manufacturing in, in Europe, almost 70 percent of, of nitrogen was uh, curtailed uh, when these natural gas prices spiked, uh, over $100 per MMBTU at one point. So this is not uh, eased up. This is continuing to be a situation. And then you put this rail strike on top of it, and it just further complicates uh, the situation for uh, American agriculture and ultimately the people that eat, yeah, which is all of us. No, <laughs> certainly, certainly it does. But also, too, just to have this, you know, potentially right ahead of the holidays, uh, you know, the timing, I think, for all all uh, for farmers, uh, for rail workers, for everyone is is uh, it's just unfortunate. Corey, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it.